All right, Thurgood Marshall used to call her Shorty. Harvard Law used to call her Dean. And President Obama calls her a trailblazing leader, a consensus builder, and one of the nation's foremost legal minds. She's Elena Kagan, America's first woman solicitor general, very possibly our fourth woman Supreme Court justice. Now, as you may have seen live here on CNN, the president tapped Kagan to replace the retiring justice, John Paul Stevens, who is 40 years older than she is. Kagan is a native New Yorker, specifically a child of the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Her schooling took her from Princeton to Oxford to Harvard Law School, where, as I mentioned, she later became the first woman dean. Now, she is the first Supreme Court nominee since 1972 who has never sat on any other judicial bench. She's never been a judge. But keep in mind, nowhere does it say that justices actually have to be judges. Plenty of people are lining up to Judge Kagan, uh, and that brings me to CNN political analyst Gloria Borger and Roland Martin. Uh, let's start with you first, uh, Gloria. Tell me about uh, this appointment. We, we, we expected that it was coming. It does not look sure. like there are obvious roadblocks to her nomination just yet. Is that, is that how you see this playing out? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think, look, you have uh, some liberals who are concerned that she's got a very strong bent on executive power that they, that they don't like, and, and you have conservatives uh, who don't like the fact that she briefly uh, moved recruiters for the military from the main recruitment place at Harvard uh, to somewhere else, and then eventually they were they were moved back uh, as a result of uh, court ruling. So you know she is somebody that conservatives might like not like that liberals might not like, but uh, all in all, and I just came from a meeting with the uh, White House Counsel Bob Bauer and the senior presidential advisor David Axelrod. It seems to me that they believe that they can get uh, a filibuster-proof majority for her. Roland, I saw something you wrote uh, for CNN.com today. Uh, talking about a, a, a double standard. Tell me about that. Well, yeah, of course, uh, you had folks who have questioned uh, the diversity of her hiring at Harvard Law School uh, in that in terms of uh, 29 various folks hired for tenure or tenure track positions, uh, nearly all of them uh, were white males. Uh, you had no African Americans. You had one Asian American female. The, the real criticism I have, though, is Gloria mentioned that folks on the left, if, if a Republican president nominated someone like this uh the typical group civil rights organizations feminist groups would be up in arms questioning that person's commitment to diversity and the point i raised is will you see the left criticize her the same way they would a, a republican candidate but also what you have here ali uh one of the issues is that this is a system set up for the right to be frank the left never will appoint someone who is a strong liberal Remember when Harriet Myers was appointed by President George W. Bush? The right said she's not conservative enough. Uh, and so uh, Democrat presidents typically appoint centrist judges, but never someone who is a strong liberal like you see on the right. They will always appoint a strong conservative. Gloria, you, you're, uh, what are you thinking you know, about this? Well, you know, we don't, we don't really know what she is. And that's part of the, the <clears throat> worries that the left have. They're afraid, you know, you... You talk to people on the left and they say, gee, we're afraid she could become our David Souter. Remember, lots of Republicans were surprised by how liberal a judge uh, uh, David Souter became. So, you know, I think you're going to hear it. Uh, I think you're going to hear this what, what, uh, from, uh, from both sides. Gloria, when are we going to get more? Allie, is it going to be in the hearings? Is that where we... Because right now, the, the criticism on all sides is a bit muted because of what you said. Because yeah. we don't have a... You're she's gonna, not a judge. We don't have her writings. Well, that's right. And, and you're going to, you know, don't forget, she worked in the Clinton administration. She uh, worked for uh, Joe Biden during the Ginsburg hearings. Uh, so, you know, there is a paper trail of sorts from her when she did work uh, in a Democratic administration. It takes time to get all of that, and I'm sure you will get it. But in the end, I'm told what these folks were looking for over at the White House is somebody who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe intellectually with John Roberts, and who was a young person, and somebody who would be able to work with the swing justice, uh, Kennedy. And, and they maybe think bring that him in, over. Hey. you know, and bring him over, and that, they think that's what they have with Kennedy. Roland, 30 seconds for you. Hey, Ali, Ali a, a, a serious concern I also have we now have an East Coast Supreme Court. If you went to an Ivy League school, that seems to be the only way you get on the Supreme Court. With Justice Stevens coming off, he went to the University of Chicago, got his law degree at Northwestern. Nearly everybody on this court is Harvard, mm -hmm. Yale, Princeton, Cornell, all of these Ivy League law schools. What does this say to the rest of the country that if you go to another law school, you have no shot ever becoming a Supreme Court justice? And so I think diversity in terms of geography is important as well. Not everyone going to Ivy League universities.
Uh, if I were up to me, I'd, I'd get somebody from Texas A&M, Roland. There you go, smart move. <laughs> Good to see you both, There are also no, many, no more Protestants on the court That's either, right. by the way. That's right. It'll no be more right. right Anglo, Three Jewish Saxon Protestant men. Yeah. Gone. Okay, we'll have lots to talk about on this, Gloria. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, Roland, good to see you as always. Thanks.